We have a very special guest, health transformer uh, extraordinaire, Kale Palamaki, the CEO of HLD, Healthy Life Devices. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. So Healthy Life Devices, you've been around since 2009, extraordinary technology. Um, you guys are based in Finland. Uh, maybe describe some of the background, some of the science, some of uh, the details around this device, because I think it's quite extraordinary um, what you guys have built here. Sure. So, so the device uh, uses a very simple concept of, uh, of employing negative pressure on, on top of the tissue to basically expand the tissue structures and, and enable the lymphatic system to further drain, drain the fluid from, from the tissue. Um, we started the actual development already back in 2005 when the, 2005. When, when the inventor created the first patents. The story of the company is kind of interesting. It took him two years to find funding for his idea. And when he was able to find the funding, he also called his uh, friends and, and, and family. And I, I actually went to the same MBA school with the inventor. So I, I put a little bit of money into this company in 2007 when the entire device was just a PowerPoint presentation. And uh, may, maybe not you know, the, the, the most smart time to do, do an investment, very risky specifically, but, but you know, that's, that's, that's how I've seen. That's often when the best investments happen well, are on the down <laughs> cycle, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> that, that, that's true. And uh, um, then, then um, he was able to raise enough money, money to be able to uh, build the first prototype of the device. And, and, and what was really remarkable was that we started seeing patient uh, response, positive patient response almost immediately. I mean, in a single treatment, we can see the swelling go down and, and patient feeling much better. And you guys, I mean, you have so many notable customers, MD Anderson, Cleveland Clinic, Penn, Cedar sinai uh, you're doing pilots with, with Mount Sinai, Vanderbilt, Kaiser. Uh, it's, it's really extraordinary, the traction that, that you've, you've gotten. You know, really, what have, what, what have your biggest challenges been? So when, when I look back into the company, um, uh, I, I did not join any operative role until three and a half years ago when I assumed the CEO position. Before that, I've, I've looked at the whole company and, and its uh, sort of baby steps uh, from the investor uh, perspective. Um, the very first thing we are, you know, a company from Finland, the very first thing was to build our own home market. And a common uh, sort of problem step for, me, uh, for Finnish companies is that when they need to expand internationally and, and we had the same, same challenge. It's difficult to go from a country to, to the whole global market and choose your battles and, and building up the reputation. That was one of the very first. Um, the, second, the second thing uh, for, for, for us has been also, also kind of getting enough uh, clinical evidence However, we have overcome that in a different way um, here in the U.S. We are actually selling the device on, on a free trial use basis. It's not a clinical trial, but an actual free loan of the device. And most of these hospitals uh, see themselves the results, and, and at the end of the free trial, they want to buy the device. Extraordinary. And, you know, you mentioned Finland. You guys started in Finland. The technology was built there. Uh, we're seeing extraordinary mobile health technology over the last many years come out of Finland. Why is that? Why, uh, and I know we were talking a little before off camera on this, but I'd love to share with the audience why you think Finland has so much going on in terms of digital health and, and mobile health. Sure, so, so I think that a lot of that uh, is, is to credit actually, actually the past uh, success of Nokia. I mean, especially in the mobile handhelds, they are still a big company than mobile networks. Um, maybe some of the younger viewers don't remember, but Nokia used to be the name in the, in the, in the, in the mobile, mobile business. And, uh, and uh, the legacy of Nokia is actually, actually pretty big. There's a lot of uh, uh, digital and mobile um, engineers in Finland. And, and healthcare as such is actually the biggest and the fastest growing export uh, area, business area in, in Finland, uh, industry area. And um, uh, many of these um, engineers after, after uh, stopping to work in the, in the um, mobile phone business started to look at other, other areas and healthcare is definitely one of the big ones going through the change that we've seen in other industries in the past. It's much more regulated, but this change is coming. And um, 
uh, I would also also say that the second second big thing is the is the um, high education. So we have quite high high number of engineers uh, in, in in Finland. It's just the extraordinary population. talent there. It's one one of the main reasons why Startup Health launched Startup Health Finland was because we were just seeing these extraordinary entrepreneurs, amazing engineers now focusing on digital health, um, and they were looking to export and expand their innovation around the world. And I think you've, you've had great success doing that, and I, I, we're seeing that with, with a lot of the great companies that are coming out of that region. Um, so you're, you're global now. Uh, mm -hmm. You're selling all over the world. Um, really, talk about the future. Where do things go? Uh, what are you most excited about? So... <clears throat> Um, oh, uh, with regards to our, our business and, and what we see at our customers, what really, really gives me energy is to see the, um, is to see the feedback we get from the patients. We, we talk, uh, you know, with patients who have already gone through a lot. They, they've had most of them cancer. They've maybe had these thoughts about the life in general. Then they get a devastating illness, a lymphedema that, you know, reduces their quality of life and is painful. And when we can help these patients, the feedback and, and sort of seeing hope coming back to their lives is, is really amazing. That's, I would say, my key motivator to really see, see how we can improve uh, patients, uh, patients and their quality of life. And you're bringing care into the home. I think that's very significant. Correct. So um, past our, our business was, was solely to sell the device to the professionals who are using the device at the professional setting, treating patients who come in. And, uh, and that was what, what, we, what we started with. Um, about a year and a half ago, I got my first email actually from a US patient who approached us saying that I want to buy the device for home that I've seen at a clinic. Uh, back then, I think we had probably 20 different uh, treatment locations in the U.S., so I would say we reached a critical mass of, you know, touch basing enough of patients, and one of them got interested. And, and today we get, on average, one or two patient uh, emails every single day uh, from lymphedema a population who want to buy the device for home. And I personally see that when we are talking about chronic illnesses, Lymphedema, as an example, has a couple of million patients here in the U.S. who suffer from it. We need to figure out ways how we can actually bring treatment to home. You can do so many things with digital things, but some illnesses require also physical devices. And we have the device where we are seeing what we can, um, what we can bring more into, the, into this is introducing digital together with the device so that we can actually start gathering data from the patients and connect mm -hmm. digital into the device. But I see that the future is that how can we enable and empower patients to main, maintain stay at home instead of uh, visiting hospital, which actually reduces the cost as well. That's right. And I, you know, you said something very important there. I, we're seeing all the, the great med devices of the future also become digital devices. There's really this cross-pollination. Um, so I think you guys have a big future there as well. Um, what are what have your biggest lessons learned, Ben, as an entrepreneur in general in healthcare, uh, but also expanding globally? So, um, well, I, I, I guess it's uh, <laughs> difficult to say, you know, certain certain single things. What I've, what I've seen myself is that um, um, my, my background is, is a lot to do in sales and I've always done B2B sales and these are very long-term sort of relationships that you build and one of my own core values is high integrity so I believe that this is something that you know when you go abroad um, be who you are uh, make sure that you nurture the relationships that, that you build it, it's difficult to find the right partners but you can only basically uh, it's difficult to find the right partners, but you really need to put yourself into that game as well. If you are not fully focused, it's difficult to get 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 sort of to the end end mm. results. Um, what else? Well, just also global. Um, you know, going from a successful business in Finland, but then learning to expand 
to different markets, I think one way that you've done that is a very innovative business model. Um, right. and, and I think that's a struggle for a lot of emerging companies, but you guys developed something that, that worked early on. So um, one, one of the things here is always to make sure that your business is profitable. And for us, uh, we have tried many different business models here in the U.S. We started with the very traditional uh, using dealer network, visiting customers. But we really soon realized that since our device sells for a fairly small am amount of money, it's $5,000, we cannot visit a customer multiple times and uh, you know, you know, basically sell uh, one device. It's not a two hundred thousand dollar We we lose product. the profit, um, and and we did a very very small trial where we realized that we can actually uh, educate uh, professional people on using the device in in very simple ways. And we built actually online learning system, which is part of the digital that we already employ in our device in a way, but it's in the sales process. So we teach. Uh, professionals using online methods, and we know that we can get uh, sort of fairly high, high percentage who actually, you know, get the same um, education than in a face-to-face -face, uh, 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 situation. So, so we can guarantee that most of these therapists know how to use the device. And uh, then the second thing, what we knew is that when a therapist knows how to use the device they see results that they have not seen before. So this was something that we knew happens. Mm. So that, that enabled us to basically do this free trial use model where we give the device free of charge. We make sure that the patient, uh, sorry, the therapist uh, goes through the online training, knows how to use the device. And then most often um, in a month session, we hear that they want to buy the device. This happened with MD Anderson. It happened with many others. So you've been in startup health as a health transformer for a while now. What's your experience been like? How do you describe startup health to other entrepreneurs or, or folks in the ecosystem? Um, I, I definitely think that the, the uh, peer network with other startup health uh, entrepreneurs, the other health transformers, is one of the key ingredients inside, inside startup health. Um, I, I see a lot of people who are more... Uh, advanced in business than I have. They have much, uh, you know, uh, bigger background. And I see also people who work in different areas, maybe not as international as, as what I've done in the past. And being able to share experiences and learn from others is one of the, one of the key, key ingredients in, in startup health. Also, um, in Finland, we have a few companies who are in startup health. So this has actually brought in in companies who might not have actually interacted in the past, and, and I already know that some of them are discussing with each other how they can bundle products together or you know, bring sort of uh, common solutions out into market. So Startup Health uh, enables uh, you know, different health companies to work together in a, in a very, very nice and efficient way. Well, Kelly, uh, it's, it's great to have you as part of the health transformer ecosystem as part of Startup Health and our family. Um, just so excited about the moonshot uh, that you guys are on and, and all the great work that you're doing to really help people. Um, and it, it's, it's quite extraordinary to see your success. I know it's been many years of work to get to where you are, but you guys are, are really doing extraordinary things. So I just want to thank you for everything that you guys do. Thank you, Unity. It's uh, great, great to be one of one of the team here and be part of the academy.